Awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with everyone. All right. So again, I know that there are some folks who are still trickling on in. Welcome to Co-op Circle, uh, the, the lovely happy hours that we have each month. Uh, we used to be weekly, but now we are on a monthly schedule. We host our happy hours on the first Friday or the second, depending on if it's a holiday weekend of the month um, from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern time. So to make sure that we're all familiar and comfortable with everyone who's in the room, we have a lovely icebreaker activity to get us started. So we'd like to ask each person to share their name, the cooperative that they support, uh, where you are in the world, uh, and maybe one or two things, uh, whether it's an event, an experience, uh, a success that you might be celebrating from this week. We'd love to hear it and, and to, to toast it, whether you have coffee or tea or what have you, uh, while we're on today's conversation. Um, so with that, I will get us started and then I'll ask for each of you all to popcorn to the next person that you see on your screen. So again, my name is Maisha Hedden. I am supporting NCBA CLUSA as one of the consultants to the membership department. Um, I work closely alongside Tamla, Janaidi, and Isabella, who's on the call today, and they'll introduce themselves shortly as well. Um, and supporting Co-op Circle, uh, like the happy hour event that we have today, as well as some of the volunteer councils and committees that we have here at NCBA CLUSA. Uh, I'm currently located about 45 minutes without traffic um, to DC where NCBA Clusa's office is. Um, and I am celebrating going to, and this is a personal thing, I tend to share the personal celebrate, uh, celebrations, uh, but I'm celebrating going to the Roots Picnic. Um, and and those, those of you who may be familiar uh, with Lauren Hill, um, she is celebrating her 25th year of the miseducation of Lauren Hill, one of the big, big albums that she's known for. Uh, so that's my big celebration. I'm super excited. It's my first time. Uh, but with that, I will pause and popcorn on to the next person I see on my screen, which is Steve. Thank you, Maisha. Uh, Steve Ediger. I am with Shy Commons in the uh, little town of Chicago. Illinois, and um, don't have any real, I mean, it's been kind of a busy week, but it's all been down in the weeds uh, details, so uh, nothing there. Really looking forward, it's Friday, I got two uh, music events planned uh, tonight and tomorrow night, so uh, I'm going to try to get about six hours of dancing in this weekend, <laughs> uh, and I will pass it on to James. Hey everyone, my name is James. Um, I'm here representing Cadi Collective, which is a digital marketing agency um, servicing cooperatives and social enterprises. Um, I am I'm coming here live from Cabaret, from Cabarete, Dominican Republic, um, where it is sunny and 88 degrees. Um, something I'm looking forward to. Uh, let's do personal. There is a holistic. Uh, festival happening this weekend where there's different workshops and uh, live music so I'm excited to join that and maybe do a little background I'm not sure if I'll do as much as Steve but I might get a little bit and I'll popcorn it to um that's to do Annie Annie, I, I think, think your microphone. Yeah. <laughs> I could feel that you were going to name name me, James. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Annie Hoy, and I work with the Northwest Co-op Development Center. They are based in Olympia, Washington. I am based in Ashland, Oregon, so almost about as far away as you can get from each other. Um, Let's see. So I just came from an amazing uh, group of people that we meet every Friday morning, our Chamber of Commerce greeters group. Uh, we're really lively and it always makes Friday feel really, really good for me. Um, let's see some success happening. Hmm. Well, I'm alive this morning and that's a, a, a success. Uh, I'm looking forward to um, 
um, an upcoming conference that has to do with uh, cooperative development that we're planning out here in the Northwest. Um, so I do like the cross-sector work that I get to do. I come from the food co-op sector. That's how I know Suzette. And there she is. I haven't seen her in a long time. Um, but this, this uh, I do enjoy cross-sector co-op work very much. So I will pass it then to Suzette because I know her and love Thanks, her. Thanks, Annie. <laughs> um, uh, Suzette Snowcob. I'm associate director of the neighboring food co-op association, which is a co-op of food co-ops in the Northeast. And uh, I live in Western Massachusetts and it's also uh, almost 88 degrees and sunny here as well. A little too hot for early June for me, if you ask me, but it's okay. Um, we had the pleasure of um, uh, welcoming another uh, food co-op uh, doors open this Wednesday, the Assabet, um, Assabet uh, Co-op Market in Maynard, Massachusetts, which is in the eastern part of the state, not quite Boston, but outside of the Boston area. And uh, they, I got to go to their ribbon cutting on Wednesday. They had um, speakers, local um uh, representatives, town folks, and about 150 people that came to the uh, the opening their doors. A great little store. Lots of help from the National Cooperative, uh, not National. <laughs> wow. Um, sorry. Lots of help from a number of different places. National uh, Gro Grocers Association, <laughs> and. Um, and they've been working for about 10 years on that co-op. And so lots of dedication. It was really, really great to see. And I will pass to um, uh, Gunnar, Gunnar Carlson. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Gunnar Carlson, and I am coming to you from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Specifically, I'm in Dinkytown, if anyone knows where that is, uh, University of Minnesota campus. Um, I work for Riverton Community Housing, and I am the Community Engagement Manager. We have seven cooperatives that are housed by our nonprofit, uh, so we have seven different properties, and so I work with and represent all those different. I serve at the pleasure of many boards. We'll just leave it at that. Um, and uh, some goals or happy things this week for me uh, is this spreadsheet of 126 lines of appropriations from the massive housing bill. Uh, and billion dollars of funding that I don't even know what I'm accessing yet, but I got all that potential. So I'm I'm really excited about what my state has done, and uh, I don't know, government got something done. So, and with that, I will pass to. Let's see, who do I got? James, have you gone yet? I came in a little late, so. Yes, I went. All right. Well, then let's go. How about Heidi? Hi everybody, I'm Heidi Traore from National Co-op Grocers, and I am located as well in Minneapolis, Minnesota, right? Um, and so super big excitement for me this week is as a part of our diversity council here at NCG, a colleague and I got the go ahead to develop a presentation which we're gonna be giving to all staff. And the presentation takes an indigenous cultural experience that she and I shared, uh, given by indigenous people here in Minnesota, links it to co-op and indigenous values to uh, supply and demand. So takes it, you know, cultural, and then uh, that uh, kind of big picture into tactical. So we're going to be giving that presentation to our all staff folks um, at our next all staff meeting. So super excited and happy about that. So that's what I got going and I'm gonna pass it to Dami. Hi everyone, um, sorry my uh, my uh, video is off. Um, so my name is Dami Adetal, I work for National Color Bank. Um, I am in Maryland, Howard County, Maryland. Uh, the office is in Arlington, Virginia. Um, I would say like Annie, um, I woke up this morning, right? 
and stuff, stuff, stuff is going on well. And um, let's see. Something that might be happening this month is we might be closing on uh, a loan with um, a startup co-op with an SBA guarantee. So that is a, a, a great thing. So we're, we're doing all we can do to make sure that um, co-ops are involved. So we're happy about that. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And who would you like to pop it to next, Ami? Uh, let's see, I joined, oh, I see someone that I know, Autumn. Autumn, you go. Thanks, Tommy. Hello, uh, Autumn Vogel. Um, I'm a I'm in Meadville, Pennsylvania, Northwest, PA, uh, my backyard. I uh, am a cooperative developer with Keystone Development Center. Tommy serves on our board, um, and I'm president of the Northwest PA Investment Co-op, a commercial real estate investment cooperative. Um, and yeah, Katie, see, uh, uh, there's exciting things. I think um, we've got a strategic planning session next weekend that I think will hopefully mean some good new direction for our organization um, and exciting news for, for clients. We got um, the go-ahead from NCBA Clusa as a preferred vendor to support Aliquippa and folks in Aliquippa starting a food co-op, which is really, really exciting. And we'll start that work very soon. Um, and that's needed and great. Um, there's a housing co-op here in Meadville that got some good good news this week um, uh, about breaking ground. So it's good, good things. Um, and Isabella, did, did you go yet? I have not gone yet, thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Isabella Landry. I am an intern for NCBA Clusa and I'm on the membership and experience team. I'm coming to you from South Jersey, specifically Marlton, if anyone is familiar with the area. And then something that I'm celebrating this week is this being my first co-op happy hour as I started here about three weeks ago. So I'm really excited to be here with you all. And I am going to popcorn it over to Carlson. Hey, sorry to miss some of the introductions earlier. Uh, my name's Carlson. I'm in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. I've uh, been uh, working with uh, one of my clients, the Southeast Center for Cooperative Development. And it sounded like we're also doing something exciting this week. Uh, I relaunched my law firm, uh, Eco Demo Law. And uh, actually, I'm looking for. Uh, uh, cooperators. Um, and all has anybody not gone? Uh, we have a few who have not gone yet. Let me just scan my, my list. Elizabeth, Elizabeth. I see you're on mute still. I'm not sure if you're talking, you're trying to talk. Okay. And I not Hi, sure. Hi, Joe. This is Peter. Yeah, Peter. Uh, Peter Dean. I'm with you uh, have. Uh, so I'm it based in the Washington D.C. area, and uh, setting up their national arm. And my exciting thing this well tomorrow my daughter is coming back from her junior year of high school in Ireland. So very excited about that. Um, but we're also, uh, Chicago and Nashville were mentioned and we're working with both those cities. Um, so great stuff going on. I can jump in. This is uh, Marie DeQuattro. I am the senior VP of Blood Centers of America. We're a blood center cooperative. We support uh, approximately 67 uh, blood centers across the country, providing contracting and administrative services. Um, we are located, uh, we are physically located in Rhode Island, um, but um, so I'm a neighbor of uh, Suzette's, um, but we are incorporated in Delaware. Uh, and we joined, uh, I, I joined the meeting today just to uh, do some networking. Um, we, you know, are always interested in what other co-ops are doing and how they operate. So um, that's why I participated today. 
And one of the things we are doing this week, one of the challenges our blood centers face um, are getting new donors uh, each and every day. So we are um, uh, actually implementing um, a mixed reality uh, experience uh, across our membership, um, which will hopefully attract uh, younger donors and get them in the door. Um, so that's the exciting thing happening in my world this week. Excellent, thank you for sharing. I see two more names. Uh, one person I just admitted in, Ken. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but we would love to get an introduction of you. Yeah, hi, my name is Ken. I'm Ken Wallace and I work for National Cooperative Grocers Association as a retail support specialist for um, food, food service. So I just thought I would chime in today too and see what, what was going on with this group meeting. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us, Ken. You're welcome. Um, we did ask that everyone would share two more bits of information about themselves. One is where you are in the world right now. And the second thing is if there's maybe one or two uh, events, experiences, whether it's personal or work related that you might be celebrating or success that you have this week. Okay. Well, the success that I had this week. Okay, I'll think about that for a second. Um, I'm located in uh, lovely Portland, Oregon. Um, been here for a long time. Mm -hmm. Do a little gardening, and uh, that's been successful so far this week. That's great. <laughs> um, and from a business standpoint, I had some pretty successful meetings exploring some new equipment options for some of our cooperative members as far as cooking equipment goes, it's all electric so that we can start moving the uh, co-op world off the fossil fuels as much as possible. So that's been exciting work. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. All right. Um, I see a few more names on the list. Um, and if you all would like to chime in, please feel free to mute yourself. Uh, one of them is Elizabeth. Um, and the other person I see on my list is, and I apologize if I put your name, um, but Car Carthikian. Carthikian. Okay. Give it one more second in case anyone wants to unmute themselves. Well, there's John Jameson just joined us. Perfect. Excellent, John. Hello. Welcome, John. Uh, we'd love to hear a little bit more about you. I know we're putting you on the spot as you just hopped on, but would you be willing to share where you are in the world, the cooperative you, that you work with, um, and you know maybe one or two things that you're celebrating this week? All right, well, uh... I'm in Lyle Station, Indiana, L-Y-L-E-S Station, Indiana, which is the last remaining African-American settlement in Indiana. And along with my father-in-law are featured in the Smithsonian African-American Museum of History and, and uh, uh, Culture, uh, him being one of the last remaining African-American farmers who's still farming family on land uh, that they've owned since pre-Civil War. And so um, uh, we uh, are have just completed our, what we call Indiana Black Loam Conferences across the state, uh, did five of them in five different regions uh, with our partners there and are over the LFPA, the Local Food Purchasing Agreement uh, Grant through the USDA that's in every state. Uh, that's supposed to be buying food directly from um, our, our uh, farmers and stuff uh, to make sure that it gets into areas that normally it's not uh, put into. And they're supposed to buy at um, at market price, not wholesale. So, uh, so we're doing that. We're over that uh, and have created our um, cooperative um, doing uh to to help to support that so uh what am i celebrating this week uh celebrating uh two things one life uh and two uh celebrating the fact that we've got all those five conferences over with so uh we're, we're starting our first farmer's market today and uh so enjoying that 
That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing and joining us, John. We really, really appreciate it and hope that those farmers markets continue to go well. Uh, but awesome. So I know we have uh, some staff members to introduce themselves really quickly, and then we will get started with today's conversation. Um, so I'll kick it over to Janady and then Tamala, if you want to wrap us up. If I didn't miss anyone else. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Maisha. And hi, everyone. Happy Friday. I'm Janady. I'm the membership intern with NCBA CLUSA. Um, I'm currently working out of my home office in Maryland, uh, Montgomery County, and um, helping out the membership team with CRM operations, our membership database, and um, event planning and logistics. Um, and I'm just really happy to be celebrating this happy hour with you all and getting to know our members more. Um, and my background is actually in marketing, so I'm really excited for today's discussion um, and hearing what James has to talk about um, regarding marketing strategies. Um, so yeah, happy to be here. Uh, before I go, I also just wanted to give a shout out to another team member on here, um, and that is um, Liz Lechleitner. Do you just want to say a quick hello to the team, Liz? Sure, let me turn my camera on really quickly. Yeah, hi everyone, happy to join um, our conversation this afternoon. Um, like Janady, I have marketing in my background. I'm also currently serving as the communication director for NCBA CLUSA. Um, so I'm super excited to hear James's presentation today and, and hopefully pick up some really great tips. Um, and yeah, and James, excited to connect with you offline at a later date to see how we can um, support each other going forward. So excited to be here. Okay. All right, uh, so going really quickly, Tamil Blaylock, VP Cooperative Relations. Um, I am in my home office in Alexandria, Virginia, um, less than a mile away from Dami's headquarter office from National Cooperative Bank. I'm very close to the DCA airport. And um, I'm, what I'm celebrating this week um, is, is this. I just love to see how this community has flourished and thrived and the excitement everyone has for today's session. So all smiles and with this being June so it is not only Pride Month but also Black Music Month I'm going to see Billy Porter this evening in DC so celebrating all the things um today um so no, excited for everyone and excited for James to share with all of you today Excellent. Thank you so much, Tamala. And thank you, everyone, for taking a moment to introduce yourself. Again, if I miss anyone, please feel free to unmute and chime in. Um, but again, we welcome you and we're glad to, to jump right into our conversation. But before we do, we're going to take a quick 60 second commercial pause just to give you a little bit of a peek at Co-op Circle. Now, some of you have already uh, join co-op circle, created your profiles, got engaged in the platform. But for those of you who have not been on a happy hour and who may not already be acclimated in the system, we just wanna make sure that you're aware of it um, and the wonderful benefits that we have here. So I will take a quick moment to just share a little bit about how you can get started, um, show you what's inside the space uh, with just a couple of quick slides and then I will pass it right on to James to get us started. So with Co-op Circle, this is a wonderful, wonderful online platform that NCBA CLUSA has created for cooperative professionals like you. This is a resource that's, that's available to all cooperative professionals, not just members of NCBA CLUSA, but who we also refer to as stakeholders, um, who is a term that we use to identify those who may not officially be members of, of NCBA CLUSA right now. Um, this is a space that you can do exactly what we're doing here on the happy hour, connect, network, share resources that you might have, share questions, opportunities, even events that you might want to uh, make sure that other cooperative professionals have access to. Um, and so with this platform, we want you to make sure that you're getting in and you're getting engaged as soon as you sign up. Um, once you, um, sign up through the link that we will pop in the chat here uh, to be able to get access to co-op circle we want you to start creating your profile pop a message into our general community um, and then see if there's some spaces that you want to get more connected into with whether it being in our small group or our sector group um, to, to see what else might be a, another way for you to connect more on a, on a smaller scale with peers who have similar views and perspectives on topics as you do 
So to get started, it's really, really simple. I like to call it a three-step uh, just to get you started. You will add your name, your email, and your password, not a bunch of questions like your birth date and everything else, uh, but just the basic information. And then you'll get prompted to move into developing a more in-depth profile where you can share more about keywords that identify who you are, what your interests are, what might be some of the work that you may be focusing on topic-wise. Um, but you'll see that more once you get in the platform. And then once you have created that profile, we want you to say hello. We have a few prompts here on the screen that kind of help you figure out what might you want to share once you, once you step into the space. You'll see that some people give a nice essay response to kind of share a little bit about who they are, and then some will keep it short and sweet and just say their name and where they are. So totally up to you, but we want to make sure that your peers know that you're in this community. Once you said hello and your profile is created, you can immediately get into joining a group. We have two groups, um, two main groups that you can join, and that's a small group and our sector groups. Our small groups, this is just a sneak peek at some of the groups that we have available. There's a lot more that we've added uh, over the past few months, um, but the small groups are more focused discussions that are customized uh, based on what profession you might be involved in. So there's an exec admin space you see here, membership in a marketing space that we have in there as well, um, and, and so on and so forth for you to have smaller, more intimate discussions. But then we also have sector groups. Sector groups are, just as they sound, more customized to the industry that you support. Um, and we also have some uh, NCBA inclusive events um, that we've had in the past uh, that we will create groups for so that they can continue their conversation as well. So one of the things that we'd like to share is if you don't see a space that really speaks to what you're looking for, just let us know. We're happy to create that for you and to plug in some peers in that community to get that conversation going, uh, because we know that this is a wonderful asset for you, because you can access this regardless of where you are in the world. You don't have to be on the East Coast or the West Coast, just like today's happy hour. All right, so I hope I kept it to 60 seconds, but I'll pause here and see if, well, 60, maybe two minutes, but I'll pause here to see if there's any more questions that anyone has that maybe I didn't touch on. Uh, feel free to use the chat if you're not comfortable speaking it out loud, but just let me know. Okay. Hearing nothing and seeing no hands raised. I will pause here again, let us know if there's anything else that comes up questions wise, pop it in the chat. But with that, I will pass it right over to James to get us started. All right, James, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm excited to be here with you guys and connect. Um, again, real quick, my name is James. I've been working in the growth and marketing and product marketing for the past nine years. Um, I've worked with uh, B2C and B2B companies um, at agencies in Chicago and New York. Um, I've worked with um, various sizes um, of businesses from startups um, to enterprise and in sectors that range from food, technology, consumer products, retail, um, and really everything in between. The great part about working um, for agencies is that I have been really exposed to a lot of different businesses and I can see the you know kind of commonalities that exist um, kind of across the various you know sectors when it comes to marketing. So today I want to talk about briefly some uh, really you know like foundations of growth marketing um, and product marketing. Um, so like the three topics that I really want to discuss are modern sales channels modern marketing funnel system and the importance of value proposition. So as you take away three things um, from this presentation, I want you to understand what are your different options for your marketing channels, um, how you go about kind of constructing and kind of optimizing your um, marketing funnel systems and the importance of value proposition. Um, I'll try to keep it as short as possible. Um, I know it's a Friday and you guys probably have had a long week, but um, hopefully you can you know, take away a few things um, you know, to think about and maybe hopefully um, kind of use for your business or your organization, okay? So um, first thing I want to discuss is the, important, the importance and kind of define your different marketing channels and, you know, today to kind of modern marketing mix. Uh, so if we could hit the next slide. Cool. So um, as you can see, number one on the list to the left, we have websites. 
So your website is the first thing because it's the core of your marketing ecosystem and the most important aspect, um, you know, to really nail down and get right. Um, it, it doesn't matter how much traffic we send to your brand. If your website doesn't clearly and efficiently convey your value propositions and convert customers, then it won't help to grow your business. Um, some common problems that I see with websites is they don't have a clear call to action. So when I say a clear call to action, I mean, what do you want your traffic to do? Do you want them to, do you want them to buy something? Do you want them to learn more about a product or service? You know, to sign up for a newsletter, to visit you at your retail store, or to learn more about some kind of promotion or some kind of event that you have coming up. Um, so this is really important. Um, you know, you don't want people to leave your website without, you know, taking some kind of action. Um, and also, the data that you get on the traffic is very, um, is very important, as we'll see later on in your marketing funnel. So next up on the list is website website optimization. So these are the processes and the system that every business should continually be doing to improve the conversion rate on your website. So you might have heard of landing page split testing. Um, this is the this is the cornerstone of CRO and consists of testing variations of landing pages by sending traffic to different pages and gathering feedback on the behavior of your traffic and ultimately how that traffic converts. So this will be looking at things, um, you know, like heat maps. Um, where does your traffic move when it's on the website? Um, where do they spend a lot of their time? And why do they leave your website? You know, you, um, there could be a part of your website that you think is very clear and um, that you think is, you know, very useful, but, um, you know, you're seeing a lot of your traffic, you know, kind of see that and decide, you know, this is, you know, too much or this is not for me. So then they leave the website. So that's great information to know. Uh, third on the list is content marketing. So that's all the creative and the content that you produce. Um, so this includes your blog and any, um, you know, videos you have on the site. Um, blogs are a very easy way to convey your, you know, thought leadership and your field and is crucial for your search engine optimization efforts, as I'll touch on a little bit later. Um, next up is your organic social. So this is your, um, you know, your uh, online community that you engage and interact with through your social profiles. And this can also include how you interact with communities. Um, on forums and online spaces, so depending on your company, can be very important um, and will likely become more important in the future. Um, next up, number five, we have CRM. This is customer relationship management. So this is actually by far the most cost effective, the most cost effective channel to reach your customers. Um, so you might know, but um, people spend a lot of time in their email box so it's important to have a well thought out strategy to grow and retain your email list um, also messaging technologies are growing in popularity um, it might be a great addition to your marketing list depending on your business model um, which as you see this um, these tips and these descriptions are going to change a lot depending on if you are a b2b or a b2c marketer um, or if um, you have you know, customers or members or users. Um, so it's all going to change slightly, but it's generally, um, you know, all the same uh, foundation. So number six is search engine optimization. So it's, it's really kind of boils down to how you rank on Google um, or how well Google, you know, kind of perceives your product or your service um, to solve their problem that they're looking for online. Um, so the big I'm saying here is, the keywords. Um, you want to be ranking for the keywords that are the name um, that they're looking for to solve the problem, um, as well as the quantity and quality of the links that are coming and leaving your website are all very important uh, for SEO. Um, next, you have digital PR and partnerships, which I think um, is a huge opportunity for the cooperative um, space. Um, so uh, PR and partnerships is an area um, that Really, when businesses come to me and then ask, you know, how can I get more customers quickly, um, very, uh, you know, cheaply, because I don't have a lot of money to spend on marketing, 
I'm always going to say brand partnerships. Um, you can, um, you know, you can partner with another brand or another company through, um, you know, campaigns, um, media content, promotions, blogs, and you can kind of um, swap out their audience for your audience, and you can kind of gain followers um, that are probably very similar to your target audience if it is also a, a cooperative um, and they already, you know, kind of know what a cooperative is and they kind of get the, uh, you know, principles behind um, a, a cooperative um, or spending money with a cooperative. So next up on the list, we have paid search. Um, and it's really kind of a shortcut for kind of ranking number one um, on the first page of Google. Um, so this is important for brands with a competitive keyword or a location specific product or service. So for example, if you can rank on the first page for let's say, um, you know, like healthy food in the state of New York or in the city of New York, and you are a health food restaurant, and let's say there's you know, 50,000 people that are searching for health food um, near me. Um, then that's going to bring a lot of value to um, your brand. That's going to bring a lot of traffic to your brand. So it's something that you definitely want to think about um, to kind of put into your marketing mix. Number nine on the list, we have paid social ads um, on social media platforms like Meta and YouTube. Um, I'm sure you all guys are all familiar and a lot of people in this day and age spend a lot of time on those two social media platforms. Um, so me personally, um, I've spent a lot of my career in this specific area um, and it's very effective for scaling advertisements really um, in your state or in this country or really, you know, kind of globally. Um, and you can also very specific with you know the target or the location and you can use a lot of different variables to kind of hone in your brand message um, so it, it's a great tool to use um, but as I'll touch on later um, you want to wait until you kind of have the other channels um, firmly established before you spend money um, with paid ads. Okay, so number 10, last but not least, we have display advertising um, or native ads. So these are really third-party websites and think of like blogs with um, display advertising on the side. Um, they can be kind of annoying, I know, um, but they are pretty effective for getting those kind of customer touch points that are kind of needed in a very busy modern world um, where it takes sometimes five to six um, you know, types of touch points, you know, for customers, you know, to see and to learn about your brand before they feel, you know, comfortable, um, you know, spending money with your brand or becoming a member or becoming a user. Um, so on the side of the list, you can see that these are all kind of groups into either paid, owned, or earned media. Um, so what I tell most businesses is to focus on the first two forms of media, um, you know, both owned and earned. Um, these are free channels that will set your brand up down the line when you're ready to spend um, money on ad campaigns. So, um, you know, for example, you know, you could have, you know, you know, great ads that people really resonate with and they are sending a lot of traffic to your website, but if your website is not converting and people go on and they don't see that you're a uh, later in your field, you don't have any blogs or you're not any other media um, or newspaper. Um, they might not feel kind of comfortable spending money or joining um, your group, organization, or your platform. So it's very important, um, you know, to kind of focus on those as kind of a, I would say, you know, I would say a word, you know, like table stakes, you know, to kind of have that before you move on. Um, you know, to other channels. So one analogy I use a lot to talk about the different channels just to, you know, tie them all up is that rising tides lift all boats. So the more time and energy that you put on one channel, the more it's going to help the other channel. Um, so it's not so much, uh, you know, we're going to focus on this channel and, and we're going to see a lot of growth. I very rarely see that. Um, more, um, 
more times than not, you know, people are spending time on all these channels and, you know, kind of as they learn what works and they test and they get better at these channels, um, people system, you know, kind of improves with that. Um, so moving on here, I'm just briefly about a funnel. I'm sure you guys one before and they're all going to be a little bit different depending on like i said before if you're um a d2c or b2b um or you know like what sector you're in um but you can think of a marketing funnel as um the top being you know your property so people who haven't heard of your brand before so these are going to be people that um you know you come in they might need to know more about your brand they might need to be educated about your brand um about what you know service and uh service and products that you offer um and then kind of as you go down the marketing funnel you know you kind of get more hype for these are people that might have you know already been to your website or they might have signed into a newsletter or they might have found one of your ads online so the further down the funnel you get the more valuable that these prospects are and all the way to the bottom you get to your most loyal fans so those are the people that have the most um, lifetime, lifetime customer value. So those are the time that, or those are the people that throughout their lifetime have spent the most and have advocated the most for like your brand, which are very valuable customers to have. Um, so kind of as I go on to the next um, slide, talking about value propositions, um, it would be helpful if you guys could just keep these channels and this kind of marketing funnel in your top of mind any propositions because it ties directly into um you know the testing of your value propositions and your messaging that will go into your ads and all of the um all of the channels I just described. If you could go to the next slide, please. Cool. So this is a fluid value proposition statement. So I know most um, kind of established businesses will have already worked on this and have one, uh, but I want to make it a point to, you know, point out that this is always a, this is always, a, this is, um, you're going to learn a lot about your consumer, which is the number one place that you're going to learn about um, you know, like what your consumers like and what they don't like, what their pain points are. Um, so this is a small example. This is a local cacao cooperative that's actually close to me in the DR. So, you know, just to kind of use this kind of framework that is on the left right here. So this is for a small and medium scale Dominican organic, um, uh, you know, cacao farmers. And to be specific, this is um, a value proposition that is um, meant for the producers themselves or the farmers. And I'll touch on this um, on the next slide, but you can have different value propositions for the different stakeholders and even the different um, consumer segments um, that you're going for if they are you know, kind of differentiated enough. Um, so the next we have, you know, satisfied with low set prices, earning low profits, and their inability to produce value in final product, um, you know, due to the middleman and lack of bargaining power, um, and then you can kind of see the rest. AMEU offers a direct sell channel and scale for value-added commercial opportunities. So, you know, kind of um, some things to kind of keep in mind here, and this is more kind of product marketing and kind of this will kind of involve more um, you know, departments than just, you know, the marketing department, this will, um, you know, this will involve the, um, you know, kind of leadership of your company and, you know, the financial and, and like the sales teams and a lot more than, you know, just your marketing department, but you want to make sure your, um, your market is blatant and critical. Um, so, um, how I kind of, you know, describe this using a analogy is the difference between, um, a vitamin or a supplement and something, you know, like penicillin or you know, some kind of medicine. So it's like, what is nice to have, especially in the long term? And then what is, you know, critical for, you know, this, uh, you know, segment of, you know, the market because they have a pain point and they need this now and, and they need this, um, you know, problem to be solved. 
Um, so, you know, real quick here, moving on. Um, you want to make sure that this user segment is dissatisfied and that the problem is unworkable and underserved and urgent. Um, you know, kind of ties into, you know, the last point, you know, you kind of want to focus on things that are in the Maslow hierarchy of needs. So, you know, social, you know, death, food, health. Um, you might not think that a lot of products are, are kind of directly related to these, but if you kind of really boil down to what a lot of products will focus from brands, you know, like what they offer, they usually are something that is very needed, you know, by humans. Um, you know, so if you can kind of touch on that pain point um, and make sure that, you know, the segment needs it, um, it is um, very advantageous to your brand. So do to is just, you know, you know, kind of self-explaining um, offers a pain solution gain. So here is you want the solution that you're offering. Um, you want the, you know, the joy in that solution, all the benefits to outweigh the pain that your user is going to um, kind of endure for, um, you know, for having to learn about your product or your service. So there's going to be things um, that they're going to have to, um, you know, uh, that they're going to have to go through um, by using a new product or service. So maybe they have to learn how to use their products or learn a new platform or a new, um, um, you know, technology, or it could be anything like that. Um, so the last thing is you want to um, provide a service or product that is, you know, disruptive, discontinuous, and defensible. So right here in this example, um, the defensible part is um, that the farmers are in profit and local preferred by acquiring long-term farmer contracts. So a lot of times you're going to see this is either you have some kind of, you know, piece of technology that is um, kind of your own that you kind of came up with, or you have a way to, um, you know, collect data that kind of makes it hard for, you know, your competitors to kind of steal this part of the market. Or in this example, um, these farmers were able to acquire long-term contracts, so it kind of makes it their market uh, or their um, sliver of the market, you know, very defensible. And that kind of leads to, you know, success going forward and more, um, you know, to still be the, the sustainability for the brand. Um, and yeah, the other thing I already kind of touched on and I'll, and I'll kind of touch on the next slide is not only will you use different value propositions for, um, the different, you know, stakeholders and the different customer segments, um, but also uh, being a cooperative and having both a, you know, kind of social and a commercial value proposition. Um, to use different value propositions and show those value propositions to different. This is the last time. Hey, James. I don't, I don't know yeah. if anyone else is hearing it, but you're coming in a little bit choppy. Okay. I will try. Okay. Apologies for interrupting. And while, go ahead and say something now, James. Okay. All right, so give me a full sentence and that, and we'll keep going. <laughs> um, keep going to the next slide. Now it's, it's still coming in kind of choppy. Um, maybe we cut off video and try to keep going? Sure. Okay. Is this better? Yes, that sounded yeah. better. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, if, if we can move on to the next slide. Okay, so this next slide, and I'll talk a little, um, sorry if I'm going in and out. So this, this next is has to do with 
Um, the importance of finding your value proposition. So how customers, how customers perceive and what they get out of interacting with your brand. So kind of looking at the diagram, you have a hypothesis or an idea, and usually this comes from the data, either from your market research or from you know the marketing that you've already and, and uh, you know the feedback loop there. And then from there, you build your ad campaign um, throughout your various channels um, that I already touched on in the first slide. Um, and then you test. Um, and so the things testing are your questions, what I kind of just spoke on, um, the different channels I spoke on, um, and, and the different um, you know, creatives, so whether it be video or graphics or images, and your different audience. So um, that's kind of you know, how you segment your audiences based on location or age um, or other demographics. And then, you know, the mask and then the of, um, you know, your ads you are conveying in your different channels. And then moving on here, how do you measure that data? It's very important. So this is all of your data, the views, the views and clicks, engagement, um, and then return on advertising spend, which is the most, in, uh, which is the most important thing for a for-profit business. Um, and then one thing I want to point out here is to don't um, kind of disregard your uh, qualitative data. So, you know, just speaking with your customers is um, is going to be very valuable. Um, they'll tell you a lot of things. To be the hard data um, is not, you know, really telling you, um, and it's just really that it is very. If you go throughout this process. You're going to learn and you're going to either pivot or continue, um, you know, doing what you're doing. And this is kind of a continuous loop and process. And I would um, that have been successful that I've worked with are flexible and very fluid and they're willing to, you know, a lot of different ideas. Um, very quick, um, you know, we'll define what doesn't. And then, you know, just for time here, I'll see a lot of people drop. I'll, I'll kind of let you kind of read these on your own. I mean, to left, but these are just, you know, some questions, you know, to ask yourself as your value propositions, um, you know, to kind of, uh, you know, help you as you're coming up with those. And then the last slide here has to do with the different value propositions for cooperatives and other social Excellent. And, and you wanted me to flip to the next slide, right, James? Yes, please. Perfect. Um, while I'm flipping to the next slide, I just want to pause here just for a moment because I know that we're right up at the two minute marker before we get ready to wrap up today's conversation. Um, just to let you all know that we are going to hang back on the line till about 2.15, just to make sure that everyone who is able to hang back can ask their questions to James. Um, so just wanted to make everyone breathe a little bit easier and don't uh, worry about not being able to uh, chime in just yet, but did want to give you all that disclaimer. Thanks, James. Yeah, so um, these is because um, my time being the properties and the properties are um, a pain point or, you know, the sticking point, I, you know, uh, is, you know, how do we get social, our community and kind of, um, you know, who we are as a, how do we get that into our marketing mix and how do we get customers to want to, um, you know, come to us because of that reason? So value who would pay for your, your you know, kind of value proposition and ultimately understand your social value proposition. So the way I see it is there's kind of two ways to, you know, kind of tackle this problem. So one I've already kind of on, you can split up your two different values and one be, you know, commercial, that's focusing on, you know, your service or your product, and then one that's focusing on, um, you know, the social impact or the fact that cooperatives and, you know, the benefits that it's with your community and your workers. And you can, um, you know, share these value propositions to, you know, different, you know, segments, stakeholders. Um, so, um, you know, show them at different levels of the marketing funnel. 
you know, the first thing that you tell people, because it's kind of a lot, you know, to, you know, to, you know, kind of digest, especially if you're not familiar with it. Um, but maybe, you know, kind of down the line after you're already, um, you know, familiar with the brand, that could be that little, um, you know, kind of added extra, you know, to get them over the hump and, um, you know, to convert to be a customer or a member or a user. Um, the other uh, way that I could see about going there and that I think might be the better way to do it is to kind of tie your social or your organizational structure into your product or your service. So, you know, to, you know, to explain um, to prospective uh, customers how your, you know, social impact, um, how it ties or how it really amplifies your product or your service. So this could be, you know, your service or um, the way that your work um, you know, just how they go about their day-to-day -day being a work owner and not an employee. So these are all, you know, things that I think if you can find a way to kind of tie in your, you know, social or, you know, your impact values into your product or your service, um, you know, can really be a powerful um, value proposition that, you know, you can serve on its own. And again, just to recap, um, as a growth marketer for now, um, don't be afraid to you know, so testing is important. Companies are hesitant sometimes when it comes to testing, but the quicker and the faster you can, you know, test and know what works and doesn't work, the better. Um, so thank you for your time. Um, I pull them out to the end. If you have any kind of individual questions uh, about your business organization or any questions about um, the presentation that I uh, just talk about would love to kind of answer any questions or any comments or anything that's going on with your guys efforts that are working or any points that you guys have. Um, but yeah, thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, James, for giving such an, uh, an in-depth uh, presentation and uh, really helping to shed some light on the value propositions of cooperatives and the different funnel channels and the marketing strategies that you can use to really make sure that not only are you putting your cooperative out in the forefront uh, for public eye, but also making sure that your constituents are clear and aware around, you know, what your mission is and what your purpose is and what your engagement has been with them uh, and the work that's being done. So thank you for sharing those those tidbits. Uh, so I just want to pause here. Uh, collect. Again, I know that we are a little past time and just to hide again that we will stay on till 215, but just open the floor for questions for James to see if there's anything that you knew was burning um, that you wanted to make sure that you asked him before we signed off. Yes, please feel free to raise your hand uh, or post a message in the chat. Uh, but the first hand that I do see raised is Heidi. Hey, y'all. Um, thanks, James, for the presentation. I have a question for you. I heard you mention in your intro that you work with D to C. And so I'm curious what kind of shifting dynamics you see in the D to C realm. A great question. So in the D to C realm, so one thing that we're seeing is kind of the um, kind of of reliance on um, the brand and more of reliance on word of mouth, um, which has always been a thing in, in, um, in, you know, marketing, but I think with the kind of, you know, popularity, you know, kind of influencers and kind of third party who, you know, kind of review and um, people are actually kind of depending less on what the brand says about and um, and kind of more depends and what their friends and family and what brands that they are in and trust what they're saying about the brand. And that's why I think, as I kind of mentioned on the second slide, that I think um, partnerships and you know, collaborations are huge. And I think that they can kind of speak to consumers more just, um, you know, just have a brand say that, yeah, I'm great and my product service is, you know, great and, and you know, you should come with me. So, yeah, that's, you know, definitely a trend. Thank you. Excellent. Any more questions for James? Uh, 
And if anyone has any questions that they think of later, um, I don't know where you can get my email and like that, but um, would love to, you know, kind of fill in the questions that you have or that, you know, you think of down the line. Um, I am always here as um, a resource. Excellent. Well, thank you for that again, James. We appreciate the time that you dedicated to the, today's conversation, um, hearing so much valuable information from you. Um, and for those who may have joined a little bit late and didn't get to see who was all in the room, um, so you want to make some con continued connections afterwards, uh, please know that we did record today's conversation. Uh, we will be sharing this out uh, outwards to, uh, to the public. Uh, typically, we will upload the video copy to YouTube so that everyone can access this information. Um, but in terms of those, you know, if you wanted to get more connected to those who were on the call, again, we can share that information with you as well. Uh, if there's anything else that we want to touch on, James or Tamala, before we sign off. No? Okay, awesome. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you all. Again, I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. James, we appreciate your time and we will talk to everyone next month at our next happy hour in July. Yeah.